Pfizer o okay, lo tira Tango Charlie, se seco América, One Foster Charlie, Foster Equal, One Florida, Canadá, Florida. Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So first up, that was the ISS ham radio repeater that you heard just then. And that was using an application which not only tracks satellites, including the ISS, it can also utilize software defined radios within that application itself. So you can listen to the satellite that you're actually tracking. Now I've not been so impressed with a piece of software for a very long time. I personally think this is incredible and to think this is still in beta. Now this application is called Skyroof and it's been developed by Canadian ham Alex VE3NEA. Now you may find that call sign familiar. If you do, then the reason is most likely because Alex has also created a whole load of applications in the past, which I'm sure every one of you will have used at some point. Now for me, the most used piece of software that Alex has written is OmniRig version 1.2. Now his website, dxatlas.com, hosts a whole load of other applications that he's made. Now that's definitely worth checking out if you've not seen it before. However, this video is all about Skyroof and there's actually a dedicated website for this exciting new satellite tracking application. Now while this is a Windows only application, Alex has actually made this software fully open source. So not only can you download a ready to go installation from GitHub, you can also download the source code. Now I have lots of ideas for this software and I'll maybe go through some of those at the end of the video just to see if you have the same ideas. Now as mentioned a moment ago, you can grab the installation package from the releases section on GitHub. Now obviously I'll leave a link to this below. Once installed and ran, you'll be presented with a screen like this. As this is a satellite tracking application, it is important to make sure the TLE files are up to date. So from the top menu, select tools and then download all satellite data. Not only will this update the satellite database, but it will also update each satellite's position information and transponder frequencies and modes. Now, one of the most exciting parts of this software is the inclusion of an SDR application, which is what we can see right here in the middle. Of course, you do need to have an SDR plugged into your computer and an antenna connected for this to work, but the supported STR hardware list contains the AirSpy Mini, SDR Play devices, except the RSP1B, and the good old favorite, the RTL SDR. Transceiver CAT control and antenna rotator control is also possible, but more on that later. And to set the connected SDR, click on Tools and then SDR devices. Any supported and connected SDRs will be shown here in this list. Now this is where you can choose the SDR and then to the right, you can adjust some of the settings like gain control, for example. Once you select an SDR, you should then see the middle screen come to life with signals being displayed. Now one of the important pieces of hardware is the antenna. Now ideally, and for the utter best performance and results, you'd really want a two meter and a 70 centimeter Yagi antenna installed on a rotator that not only provides azimuth, but also provides elevation. Just so the antennas are pointing to the satellite that you're tracking automatically as they pass by. However, in this video, I'll just be using a dual band base antenna mounted on the roof of the house. Now this antenna covers the two meter and 70 centimeter bands. And while it's not the best for working with low earth orbiting satellites, it can still provide enough reception for this application to suck you in for hours. Now, another setting we need to make is to tell the software where we're actually located. Now, this is so it can work out the location of each satellite against your specific location. So within tools, you can select settings and towards the top, you can enter a grid square. This is called a Maidenhead Locator Square and there's plenty of websites online where you can figure this out for yourself. So let's now take a look around the software. On the top left, here we have a list of satellites that are associated with a group called Active Hamsats. Now this comes preloaded and you can edit or create new groups if you want to. This window shows how long until the next pass for each of the satellite in the list. It also shows the maximum elevation against the horizon as zero degrees. Now when you select a satellite here, you can look at the section below 
and this shows us the active transponders for that selected satellite. Now most satellites have more than one transmission. There will be a main data or voice repeater and possible another frequency which contains TLM data, which is technical details about the satellite. Now that's normally transmitted in a digital format like FSK or AFSK or GMSK and you will need software to decode that. Now below this section, another section titled Satellite Passes. Now this will list all of the upcoming predicted satellite passes for that selected satellite. The information shown here can be useful if you want to plan to capture a specific satellite, but only at a specific time or only above a minimum elevation. Up on the top right, we have a sky view looking down on your location right in the middle where the crosshair is. North is pointing up and generally you will see an arc or prediction line where that satellite path will take. Now this can be extremely useful if you're hand tracking a satellite using a portable Yagi antenna. The Earth view box is an overhead view of Earth with a selected satellite right in the middle. Now you can zoom in and zoom out if you want to, but this will show the predicted location for the selected satellite with an Earth map underneath. Now across the top of the application, you can see the downlink and uplink frequencies for that selected satellite or transponder. You can also see and change the mode of modulation. Some satellites transmit FM audio like the ISS and some satellites which have a linear transponder, you'll need to select SSB or upper sideband. Some satellites just transmit digital data. So you may use FM or USB D for digital or maybe even just Morse code where you would select CW. Of course, the uplink frequency would only be used if you're using a transceiver or transmitter where you need to transmit to that selected satellite. A couple of other pieces of information and control are also found at the top. If you do not have the AGC enabled for this selected SDR, then you can manually adjust the RF gain here. You can also control the output volume from the SDR software, which is demodulating those satellite transmissions. Now, there's also an azimuth and elevation display here which if you were using an external rotator, this information would be sent off to it from the software. Now, another really impressive feature of Skyroof is the timeline located at the bottom middle of the screen. This will show all of the satellites in the selected group on a timeline. The height of each satellite here represents the elevation and the width of each satellite marker, which is spread out over an actual timeline. That represents the duration of the satellite's visible path from your location. Now, if you've got this far and are wondering why we need satellite tracking software, well, not only does this software tell us and show us where a particular satellite is at any given time, it also works out what we call the Doppler shift. As a satellite passes us overhead, there's a phenomenon where the frequency of the transmitted signal from the satellite will change. Now, this can be predicted and this software can predict this, hence why when you select a passing satellite, the frequency starts to change. In this example here, you can see on the waterfall of the SDR receiver, the frequency going down, producing this kind of linear curve as it prints the received signals onto the waterfall. Now, as mentioned earlier, you can create your own groups for different types of satellites. Maybe you want to add more to the ham radio satellites, or maybe create a group for all those other types of CubeSats or LoRaSats or SatNog satellites that just send status packets. Well, you can do that with the group editor. You can even provide a name so it's easily identified for recalling later. Now on the subject of other satellites, what's really fascinating about this software is that across the top of the waterfall, you'll see lots of satellite names with a little arrow pointing to the top of the waterfall. Now, if you see a signal under those arrows, it's most likely the satellite is passing overhead or at least above the horizon. Even if you have no idea what this satellite is used for or the type of transmission it's making, you can click on it to start tracking it. Then take a look at the satellite's transmitter panel on the left to see more information about the frequency and data types that that satellite is transmitting. Now this had me engrossed for hours as more satellites appeared at the top. I was frantically opening various digital decoding software packages to try and decode these signals. Now this is possible because one of the settings within Skyroof is to send the demodulated audio output to a virtual audio cable like VB audio cable. 
Now, most third-party decoders will accept an audio input. So piping a demodulated audio from Skyroof to these applications has now been made super simple. So let's lastly take a listen to a couple of handsets that I captured. The first example here is the FM repeater located on the ISS, and we will be listening to the downlink frequency. Now the next example is another ham satellite called RS44 and this time it uses a linear transponder. Now this means that there's actually a set amount of bandwidth users can transmit on. Now this is mostly used with sideband or upper sideband. Now while I was not using a Yagi antenna which would have yielded clearer results, take a listen to this. Notice how I can also manually tune each signal and then once tuned, the Doppler shift is still applied automatically. So there we go, guys. That's an overview of Skyroof. I think Alex has done an absolute fantastic job with this. Up to now, the satellite tracking applications that I've used have always needed a separate SDR application and then connecting them so that they can track the frequencies together. With this Skyroof application, there's no more need for that. You can just use one application, click on a satellite, and then listen to its transmitted data or audio. Now, this application is in beta, so maybe Alex is open to suggestions. If Alex does actually watch this video, then I would like to see a little bit more control with regards to the SDR demodulation settings. Maybe being able to adjust FM bandwidth and also sideband bandwidth, that would be quite interesting. Maybe also some noise reduction for those weak signals. Now, another really interesting feature that could be added and probably would take some time because the amount of work that would be involved would be to have inbuilt decoders. Imagine being able to click on a satellite, selecting one of the transponders that's sending TLM data, and then just having that data shown on the screen without having to open any other application. As this program is open source, maybe you have experience with creating these software decoders. If you do, take a look and see if you can contribute to the project. Thanks again to Alex, really appreciate this package of software and I'll definitely be using this as my main tracking application from now on. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to my patrons and YouTube members, my subscribers, and of course, all of you that watch my videos. It's very much appreciated. Anyway, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.